Hello, this is John from tabletclass.com, and in this particular video, we're going to talk about homeschool pre algebra placement. And there's two main points that I want to address in this quick little video. The first is how do you know your child is actually ready uh, or has the right math skills in order to start pre algebra? So, we're going to talk about that, and we're also going to talk about do they have um, kind of the right academic habits have they uh, matured enough if you will uh, to handle pre-algebra as this is definitely a uh, more advanced math course than what they would be doing or what they have done in middle school mathematics so we're going to be talking about this in just one second also if you need help with actual homeschooling you can check out my full homeschool math courses at tabletclass.com i focus on middle and high school mathematics matter of fact i have a great pre-algebra course and an actual placement test. You can find that, uh, again, at tabletclass.com. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. And this is just going to be a quick general video. I'm not gonna um, hit every single little math skill that your child needs to know. I'm gonna kind of focus in on the big stuff. So uh, let's kind of get into it. See, these are the math skills that your child will uh, kind of want to have mastered uh, by the time they finish up middle school math and they transition into pre-algebra. Now, just on this point here, before I actually get into these skills, where does a student typically take pre-algebra? Let's kind of break it up this way. So here you have your elementary math, and then here is middle school, and here is high school. Typically, for most students, they're going to be taking pre-algebra at the eighth grade level, the end of middle school. Okay, But if your child is a little bit behind and they're starting pre-algebra uh, in the ninth grade year, that's not the end of the world um, as well. So don't feel bad. Or don't feel like you have to pressure your child to absolutely, you know, take uh, middle school or um, pre-algebra at the eighth grade level in middle school. Okay, if they, what's more important is that they master, they get a strong foundation because if they do well in pre-algebra, that's going to set up a strong foundation for the rest of uh, the math they're going to be doing in high school. So you definitely don't want to rush this course, but at the latest. Uh, they need to complete pre-algebra, generally speaking, and the ninth grade year. Okay, but again, it's uh, most common for most students to take this um, in the eighth grade year. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into these skills. And these are just the big skills that I've seen over decades of teaching mathematics, where if students are strong in these skills, uh, they have some really good momentum going into pre-algebra. If they're weak in these skills, this is going to give them a tough time. Now, all this stuff, you know, can be resolved. But if you're looking at, you know, considering pre-algebra as the next course for your child, you want to just kind of verify that they have these particular skills. So let's talk about the first one. The first one is just basic number operations. All the stuff that they learned in elementary school. In other words, can they add, subtract, multiply, divide without the aid of a calculator? How are they with decimals? They, do they understand place values, right? The tenths place, the hundredths place, all this kind of elementary uh, level stuff. Can they uh, divide um, uh, numbers without the aid, again, of a calculator? Now, a calculator is important, but you have to have strong number operation skills to be successful in algebra, okay? So if they struggled in elementary mathematics with uh, number operations, you're gonna wanna do some remedial work or you know you need to kind of be, um, you know, maybe a little bit more patient in terms of maybe your child needs one more course, uh, a little bit more review before they get into pre-algebra because they have to be strong with basic number operations. Now let's move on to the next one here, and that is the order of operations. Now, if you're not familiar with the order of operations, it's basically uh, the order we do a math problem when there is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers. Uh, there's a little acronym that goes with this called PEMDAS, um, if you kind of remember this from your own school days. But this is a, another area that a lot of students uh, typically think they um, uh, know better than they actually do. <laughs> I guess I'll say it that way. So some students are like, oh, yes, I can do this, I can do that. Well, in fact, when you actually give them, um, you know, a lot of questions in these areas, they're not as strong as they actually are. 
Now, I will say in my pre-algebra course, I go over the order of operations. We don't cover uh, basic number operations as that stuff that, uh, again, that's um, really taught at the elementary levels. You can't review all of elementary math for pre-algebra, but the order of operations is something they should be familiar with. Uh, again, it's going to be taught in my pre-algebra course and most other pre-algebra courses as well. They just need to be familiar with it so it's all this stuff's not just brand new to them. Let's talk about another math skill that your child hopefully uh, is pretty good at at this point before they go into pre-algebra, and that's dealing with positive and negative numbers. In other words, can they add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. So again, they'll have to have their basic number operations uh, down, and then they're going to have to know all the rules, what we call the real number set. Um, a negative plus a negative is another negative. A negative times a negative is a positive, all that kind of stuff. This is not that difficult, but it's very important that they already are familiar with dealing with positive and negative numbers, again, without the aid of a calculator before they get into pre-algebra. Now, uh, just like the order of operations, all this is taught again in uh, most pre-algebra courses, certainly my pre-algebra course as well, because the real number system is extremely important, but they should already be familiar with. This is stuff that should be covered in a good sixth and seventh grade math course. Okay, let's talk about another big one, and this is a real big one, and that is fractions. Now, fractions is probably very well may be the number one area where most students struggle with. And most students don't like fractions. I totally understand it because they're like, oh, I have to, fi have to find the LCD or the um, LCM, etc. But this is extremely important, okay? So your child really needs to understand how to add fractions, subtract fractions, multiply, divide fractions, how to find the LCD, which is not exactly easy. Now, if I... Uh, give a student a uh, problem like one third plus two fifths, most students be like, oh yes, the LCD is 15, not a problem. But what if I made these denominators like 30 and then down here I had like 58? Okay, now this would be much more difficult in order to find the LCD. So there is like a procedure uh, to find the LCD which your child should you know, be able to kind of um, handle uh, more difficult fraction problems. Now, again, I teach all of this in my pre-algebra course, but your child, um, you know, really needs to be familiar with fractions. All this, again, is uh, stuff that was taught in elementary school in a strong middle school uh, uh, curriculum for sixth and seventh grade math. Now, there's a lot of things here that I'm missing or not uh, including because these are the big ones, okay, uh, in order for your child to kind of really have the math skills to enter pre-algebra. But they should be familiar with um, basic geometry concepts as well because in most pre-algebra courses, certainly mine, uh, pre-algebra, there is a, a chapter on area in volume, so they should have some uh, familiarity with doing, you know, basic geometry uh, problems, etc. But these are the big ones here that if your child is strong in these areas, it's a pretty good indication that they have the math skills ready uh, so they can be ready uh, to enter into pre-algebra. Again, all this stuff is going to be reviewed with the exception of number operations. So if your child is dependent on the calculator, in other words, they always do their work with a calculator, try to encourage them to put the calculator away when um, they're doing basic uh, number operation problems. That's a good kind of way to, uh, a good um, approach to help them not forget everything they learned in elementary school. So let's go ahead and talk about the next part of this. And this is kind of uh, subjective, but I'll tell you, this is really, really important stuff. And this is academic habits that your child um, hopefully has, and believe me when I tell you, you know, <laughs> teaching these courses, being young once, being a parent, I totally get it if your child is not strong in these particular areas. But here's the thing, to be successful, you got to remember pre-algebra is uh, at the um, end of middle school, it's beginning of high school. So you're, you know, your child's going to be entering in uh, into a phase of their academic life where the courses are going to become more demanding. So they're going to have to increase their academic habits or academic skills. So I want to talk about some big ones here, and all of this counts as well. And if your child 
isn't strong in these particular areas, these are things you can help them work on. So let's go ahead and start right here. And that first one is neatness. Now, so many young people struggle with this. Uh, it's typically, for some reason, it's the uh, boys that uh, seem to struggle with this. Um, young um, ladies uh, are generally neater than uh, the young um, boys, but for whatever that uh, reason is, I know myself when I was young, I was terribly sloppy. Okay. So, you know, if your child is just like, you know, sloppy and you're on their, you know, case, you're like, you got to be neater, you got to be neater. Well, listen, keep that up. And they have to learn to become as neat as possible. Now, this is all relative. Some uh, students are super sloppy, but they can improve. Okay. They don't have to be perfect, but they need to be um, able to write you know, in a clear way so their teacher can understand. So how do you um, kind of um, improve your child's neatness? Well, the first thing you want to do is have them slow down, all right? So if they're doing homework or anything else, have them slow down, and you need to give them a lot of feedback, okay? And kind of also make them redo their work. Like, well, that's not good enough. Go back and erase that and try again. So basically, they get in kind of in a habit to just be the uh, be neat, the first time around. So you want to increase your standards, if you will, of what's acceptable, because uh, even if your child's strong in math, if they're not neat, that's really going to cause problems because you're going to be turning in their work. The teacher's not going to be able to kind of understand what's going on. So this is one that you really want to kind of check. So make sure your child is at least somewhat neat. And if, they're, uh, if they uh, are not, you're going to have to help them improve. Okay, the next one is just basic organization. Okay, now this is stuff that they should be doing for themselves. So if you're involved in helping them with their course, you're going to have to kind of, um, you know, let them kind of organize themselves because you're not going to always there, always be there for them. Like, let's say in high school, obviously, and in college as well. So are they organized? Do they keep a, a notebook pretty well? Do they keep all the paper uh, worksheets, etc.? You know, the words. This is just basic organization. A lot of people, a lot of adults, struggle with this as well. But this is really important because you're going to be, they're going to be managing a lot of information. Uh, in a course like pre-algebra. So if they're not organized, help them with simple systems. I, I'm a big believer of old school, simple systems, just a regular three ring binder, you know, keep it simple. And if they have too many uh, things that they have to manage, in other words, they have, you know, an online calendar, they have a, note, a physical notebook, they have, a, you know, a filing cabinet or whatever the case is, you know, these are almost too many things to manage. So simplify what they are kind of organizing okay so simple simpler the better and don't be afraid to be kind of old school about it just as um, you know pencil uh, paper is perfectly fine okay all right the next thing is note taking this is critical all right so does your child take notes now again they might take some notes but if they're not neat and they can't understand their notes or they're incomplete that's not helpful but one of the strongest correlations I've seen over decades of teaching mathematics is those students who take great math notes almost always get the uh, top grades, right? I can't find many exceptions for students that get A's in math courses that didn't have great notes. Uh, and the reverse is true. Those students who, you know, unfortunately fail uh, typically didn't have great notes. So if you um, you know, look at your child's notes. That's going to be a good indication on how they're going to perform on test. Note taking is critical. So this is stuff that you can check every day. Check their notebook. Hey, let me see your notes. And are they neat? Can you read them? Can you understand them? So these are all skills, okay? Habits and skills. And um, again, the only way they're going to get better at uh, and better at these skills is that, you know, they become habits. In other words, they're doing them every day and that's kind of the new accepted standard. Okay, so the next thing is focus, all right? So uh, is your child focused? Now, there could be all sorts of situations that um, disrupt your child's learning, okay? They could have a learning uh, challenge like ADHD, ADD, things like that. Um, so 
you know, you really need to you know, set them up for success uh, in terms of their learning environment, okay? And, of course, you're dealing with young people. They're just normally going to be distracted. They're not going to be, you know, mature adults taking these uh, courses. So, you know, you're going to want to really make sure they stay engaged and focused while they're learning. Now, if your uh, child, you know, was in an actual classroom, you have a teacher kind of redirecting them, uh, uh, you know, to get back to, you know, paying attention. But, your child's ability to focus is huge, okay, in terms of their success. So help them out, redirect them, put them put them in environments and times that work for them, okay? And again, a lot of feedback is important, right? Tell them, hey, you're doing good or you need to improve. Um, you know, don't do this. Certainly take away their cell phones and stuff by the time they're learning so they don't get distracted. So reduce distractions and, you know, find um, all the techniques that you know that work for your child, right? Every um, person is different. Every child is different. So you as the parent need to figure out how to, uh, you know, uh, um, keep your child focused on what's going on. Now, me in my instruction, I try to keep um, uh, the student engaged by not boring them to death with just, you know, a lot of math uh, gibberish, right? So that's the my job as a teacher, but the job of the student is to stay engaged, pay attention, and a great way to keep engaged is to be taking notes, all right? So you stay focused by paying attention, write down what the teacher uh, says. Now, in a program like mine, it's um, really good because you can pause a video in a real live classroom setting. You can't just pause the teacher and say, hey, can you stop there so I can write this down? That's, uh, you know, kind of a different challenge. But uh, let's go ahead and just wrap this up by this last thing. And, of course, these um, are my kind of big ones here, but there could be others. And this is just a general work ethic, okay? Does your child study? Do they you know, complete all their homework? In other words, are they always trying to, you know, um, escape doing the work. This is all normal stuff. Believe me, I was a, a terrible student, you know, decades ago myself. So, you, you know, your child is learning how to be a strong student. Hopefully they already have great academic habits, but this is something that you're going to have to set the standard for. Okay. So even if they don't want to do the work, you, get, you have to get them to do the work. Okay. Complete your homework. Don't accept excuses because if there's too many excuses like, well, you don't have to do this or you don't have to do all of that, uh, definitely don't let your child kind of um, dictate, uh, you know, the terms of learning, right? So like, I don't, I, you know, especially this comes like with homework, right? In my program, here's practice proms. There's, let's say, 20 different proms and they start doing the first few proms and they get these right. Uh, a lot of students were like, well, you know, I'm getting these right. Why do I have to do the rest of these? Uh, you know, I'm just going to turn on my homework or I'm just going to stop and call this good enough. Well, that is a recipe for disaster in terms of mathematics because all these other pro uh, um, uh, problems down here um, are of a different variety. They're more challenging. So this is what I'm talking about. You have to have a work ethic to complete these tasks, complete your homework, study for tests, put in the time, and all of these are critical, okay? And this is not easy stuff, and your child doesn't have to be perfect with all of these uh, things here, but uh, these are the areas that you want to be paying attention to so you can help them improve um, as they transition from middle school into high school. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up right here. I know I kind of gave you a lot of information, but it's important that your child is ready for pre-algebra, okay? You're making a transition from middle school math into algebra, and algebra uh, really is critical, okay, in terms of mastering algebra to be successful in high school mathematics, okay? If your child, um, you know, had, uh, is going to, or, um, has a tough time in pre-algebra, they're definitely going to have a tough time in Algebra 1, and then geometry and algebra two, you kind of see where this is going. It's a domino effect. But if they do well in pre-algebra, that's going to set them up for success in algebra one. Everything kind of builds uh, upon uh, builds upon itself when it comes to mathematics. So everything is important, and along with the math skills, uh, you know, in these various courses, as you as they become more challenging, you got to get stronger academic habits as well. Okay, this is really uh, going to serve them well, you know, later in their high school years and into college. 
Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschool math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.